Over the past few years, FromSoft have developed a talent that I have divided feelings on, which is to take more niche, hardcore style game design and then to infuse it into a formula that makes it more popular and palatable for the mainstream. And in fact, of all developers working right now, I would say that FromSoft are the most influential. They are the studio and the Dark Souls family of games is the series that all other studios and game series are looking to for ideas and inspiration and guidance. And even when it doesn't make sense, other game series are lifting ideas and concepts from Dark Souls. So now everything has stagger systems. Most things have Dark Souls style stamina bars, Estus flasks or Estus flask copies. Checkpoints have returned. Remember there's a period there before Dark Souls where checkpoints were lame and antiquated, so get rid of them. Well, checkpoints are back. Boss fights. Remember before Dark Souls, there's that period where boss fights kind of just turned into Zelda style garbage of stick the bomb in the lizard's mouth and that'll kill it. You know, you just unlock the keys to the boss fight. Old school style boss fights were mostly brought back because of Dark Souls in this family of games. And there's so many other ideas and concepts. The list goes on and on. The point being that that whole meme that X is the Y of Dark Souls, the Electric Underground is the Dark Souls of YouTube, insert whatever variables you want. The reason why that meme exists and the reason why even though people know it's kind of cringe and you listen to someone in a podcast and they say some things like Dark Souls and you go, ooh, even though Everyone pretty much knows that that comparison is so common that it's cringe now. The reason why it still comes up over and over and over again is because it reflects the reality of how influential FromSoft are when it comes to game design. They are the kings. They are the people working right now that everyone is looking to get ideas and inspiration from. They are at the top of their game, at least for the time being. And in fact, FromSoft have been so successful that not only have they changed the way other game developers make games, they've actually changed the game review landscape. They've changed the way video game critics view games. Today's batch of video game critics have been raised in the house of Dark Souls. They analyze game design, gameplay mechanics, combat mechanics from the lens of Dark Souls. This is why game journalists are always comparing things to Dark Souls all day, every day. It's because this is how they understand video game design. And for the most part, this is why I'm divided on this. For the most part, this has been a very healthy shift in a lot of ways. Where before Dark Souls, a lot of really important action game, video game mechanics and concepts were not understood by critics and not appreciated by critics. Like I said before, checkpoints, boss fights, more fundamental style combat. All of that is much more appreciated now because of Dark Souls. So this is all good news, right? FromSoft have cracked the code. They found the way to take concepts and ideas and gameplay that previously was not widely recognized or appreciated and to have it now be the gameplay discussion du jour to be the gold standard that everyone is looking at and praising and admiring. Because let's not forget that FromSoft did not just spring into existence in 2009 with Demon Souls, which is kind of the impression you get, right? When you talk about Demon Souls and FromSoft, you kind of just assume they just appeared in 2009 and that was one of their first games and then they rose up into the position they're on now. There's actually this whole dark backlog of all these FromSoft games from a long period of time that were not widely played, were not widely appreciated, and here's the important part, were not critical darlings. And in fact, the dividing point seems to be Demon Souls and Dark Souls because we're talking about Armored Core today. I promise this all leads into today's review. Armored Core the last release before this new one, 6, Armored Core 5, came out about the same year as Dark Souls. And if you go through and read reviews for Armored Core, is it hailed as this giant masterpiece? Was it widely appreciated by video game critics? No, not really. 
And if you look through most of FromSoft's backlog up to that point, that was kind of their fate. Their games didn't sell well, critics didn't praise them that much. And I bring this up because I do think it is actually quite important because from the understanding of most conversation about FromSoft and FromSoft games, the idea is kind of they made a bunch of shitty crappy games back in the day and then they suddenly became brilliant and geniuses when Demon's Souls and Dark Souls came out and then they figured it out. You know, they're, they're like stupid and then they made Demon's Souls and they got smart. That's kind of the way people talk about FromSoft or kind of the impression you get. Actually, my view of this, and it's more consistent with this channel's view of game design of this era, is that they were underappreciated during this era. It's not that they were making bad games in that era. It's that these games were not being appreciated for their merits. And ironically, it was FromSoft themselves, with the influence of their own game design, that have shifted the critical cultural viewpoints of older FromSoft games. So I bet now you take someone from IGN, you take someone from GameSpot or Eurogamer, and you hand them an older FromSoft game, Armored Core 5, something like that. I bet they would come away with a much more positive impression of that game because of the context of Dark Souls and all the things that FromSoft have been able to accomplish. It's actually a very interesting lesson in itself in how the popularity of gameplay design influences its critical response much more so than critics are going through and actually parsing through the design of a game and the mechanics of the game and asking themselves is this well designed in a fundamental way no no that is not how games are discussed analyzed or reviewed they are mostly reviewed and discussed and analyzed from the point of popular consensus and so if your game design is able to connect with a large group of players that's going to give you a much stronger basis for strong review scores and that type of thing. And I bring all this up because it ties directly into today's review, which is for Armored Core 6. FromSoft have brought back one of their old franchises from their dirty, dirty past. A franchise that did not sell super well, a franchise that was not regarded all that well critically. You go back and you read the reviews for Armored Core 5 and Armored Core 5 Verdict Day. They weren't awful. It's not like a terribly reviewed game where it was getting absolutely slaughtered like some of the action games of the PS2 era, but the tone wasn't enthusiastic, that's for sure. The tone was like, all right, we get it from Soft. It's a mech game, we get it. This is boring, this is stale, we've seen this before, move on. Let's all move on from this garbage. We need something different, and that something different was Dark Souls, and that changed everything. And so the history is important to understand because this release is a convergence of old FromSoft with new FromSoft. And the shift from Armored Core 5 to Armored Core 6 is really interesting. And so now it is time to share my thoughts on Armored Core 6. And I do think it is important to keep in mind the history of the franchise and the developer for today's review. Because in a nutshell, my impression of Armored Core 6 is that this is the game I thought they would make. To the letter, I could predict what Armored Core 6 would be. And that is what FromSoft were able to deliver. And that is both a good thing and kind of a bad thing. It's a good thing because, like I was saying before, FromSoft have honed this style of game design. They've brought it down to a science. And in fact, this style of game design is so influential that it is second nature to most gamers now. Even people who don't play Dark Souls actively because that design has so infiltrated all other gaming franchises, even if you don't play Dark Souls, even if you play Zelda, you will still pick up on this style of game design because it has just become a common language among gamers. So it makes absolute logical sense to take Armored Core, this neglected franchise from the past, and to bring it into the Dark Souls family. It is completely logical and it makes a lot of sense, but I personally find it a bit underwhelming. And the part about it that is kind of ironic 
is the reason why I find it a bit underwhelming is because this is what other developers would do as well. If someone else was tasked with making Armored Core 6, what they would do, obviously, is say, okay, let's take the design of these old Armored Core games, let's update it to fit in with Dark Souls style design, and people will love it. And lo and behold, people do love it. <laughs> and it's a massive success. The issue though, that I have with FromSoft and the part that makes today's review interesting is that in this process that FromSoft have developed of taking more niche hardcore style games and shifting them into this Dark Souls formula, sometimes some of the secret sauce of what made older Armor Core interesting and older mech games interesting is being lost. And so this is not me saying that Armor Core 6 is a bad game or that it's an embarrassment or whatever hot take you want. If it helps, I would say it's like an eight out of 10. I think it's a really solid, well-made game. Uh, one of the best games to come out this year, but all the reasons why you think Armored Core 6 is good and all the reasons why most game critics and reviewers are going to say Armored Core 6 is good, we all already know. You don't need me to tell you that. You don't need me to tell you why having good boss fights is important. You don't need me to tell you that because you already understand it. The game review landscape already understands it. Everyone already understands why Armor Core 6 is good because the elements that make it good in a lot of people's minds are from basically the most popular influential video game franchise. It's like me reviewing Nevermind and telling you why Nevermind is good. You've read that review. You've heard that documentary. You've heard the VH1 behind the music. You know why Nevermind is good. We all get it. And so what I'm going to be focusing on in today's review are what I think are the missed opportunities or the areas where I don't think this Dark Souls formula perfectly fit with what they were going for. So let's start at the top and talk about the change in camera system. Because for those who do not know, Armor Core 6 features a new camera system from Armor Core 5. Now I'm mostly going to compare 5 and 6 because I like 5 quite a bit. So the new camera system of Armor Core 6 is going to be very familiar to all of you because it is a unlocked third person camera. I'm not sure what the technical term for it, but essentially it means that your character can look one direction and the camera can look the opposite direction. Your character's facing direction in game has no influence over the camera direction. You fully control that camera. What the character's up to really doesn't matter all that much. The only place where it tends to matter and it's kind of interesting and kind of important for Armor Core actually, is there can be a desync sometimes where let's say you turn the camera speed up to 10, which I recommend, and you need to instantly turn behind you and shoot. Well, the game needs to still animate your character turning and shooting. And so the camera will go like bing and go behind you, but then there's like this slight delay where the mech needs to turn to catch up with the camera. And that'll be important in a little bit here. In Armor Core 5, you have a third person camera, but it's a fixed back third person camera, just like in Resident Evil 4. So Armor Core 6 is Resident Evil 4 Remake and Armor Core 5 is Resident Evil 4. I kid you somewhat because I think Armor Core 6 is much better, much better than Resident Evil 4 Remake. But yeah, that is the shift in the camera system. And so what does that change? So in Armor Core 5 and older mech games, and this is why I think it is important, is that I think managing your looking and the camera system is actually very important to the overall meta of the game. Because what you're supposed to be doing is you're supposed to be piloting this mech. And the skill of the game, the primary function and skill of the game is being able to aim and control the movement of your mech. And so this creates certain techniques that are really important in Armor Core 5 and aren't important at all in Armor Core 6. For example, let's say you need to turn around because something gets to your back in Armor Core 5. In Armor Core 5, you have this booster on and off. And when you're in boost mode, it's more slow to turn. When you're in boost mode, you move faster, but you turn slower. In non-boost mode, so you're on the ground, feet on the ground, you have more traction. So you move way slower, but you turn faster. 
That is the essential meta of the controls. Boost to move, but you can't turn quickly, or no boost for traction, you can't move, but you can turn. And it comes into gameplay all the time. It is the fundamental of being a good mech pilot, is being able, like being a driver of a car, to transition from drifting into boost, to hard traction, to turning, to drifting. And so there's this button in Armored Core 5, which is boost mode on, boost mode off, which is super important to that game's control system. And it is not as easily accessible as Armored Core 6's system. It takes much more practice and kind of understanding the concepts of piloting a mech. But the benefit of the locked on camera to the back of Armored Core 5 is you're way more precise. You have much more direct, precise control over your aiming and movement. And in fact, Armored Core 5, ironically, plays much more like a shooter than Armored Core 6. Armored Core 5, like aiming at stuff, still actually is good. Like if you can manually aim at things, that's good. And then being able to manage your turns and your movement with your boosters, that puts you in a higher skill than someone who doesn't know those ideas and concepts. So there is a skill meta to the movement and aiming of Armor Core 5, which I would consider fundamental and important. In Armor Core 6, a lot of this is reduced. It isn't completely gone, but it is heavily reduced because for one, turning around no longer matters. So why would you ever exit boost? There's really no reason to do it. So Armor Core 6 has that button the boost on, boost off button, but there's no reason not to be in boost. I mean, why? Why would you ever not be in boost? There's only slightly niche scenarios in Armor Core 6 where you would not be in boost. I think they should have just removed it. Just get rid of it. If you're gonna go this whole third person free aiming camera system, just get rid of this pretend to not be in boost mode because I've played with it a ton. It, it basically, there's almost never any benefits to not being in boost. You're just in boost all the time. It's just a switch you need to flip at the beginning of the level and then just leave it. Just stay in boost. So there's one, again, there's kind of a conflict already there in the controls and camera system between their traditional armor core formula and this new armor core formula where it's like boost doesn't matter. The concept of being in boost and not in boost is basically negligent now. Another big issue with the change in camera system is the change in the way the combat flow of Armor Core 5 and Armor Core 6 works because they are quite different. And what's funny is that the camera system of Armor Core 6 has the exact same issues of the camera system of Elden Ring because it is the same camera system. And so if you go back, I have this old podcast of Boghog, Actane, and myself we're all arguing about Elden Ring and discussing Elden Ring. And one of the best critiques brought up in that video is Boghog pointing out that the horse combat in Elden Ring is actually shitty because once you discover how the camera system works and you discover that circle strafing is just OP, you never have a reason not to circle strafe enemies in that game on the horse. You just should circle strafe all the time because the horse has movement inertia, it has high movement speed, and you can aim, and you can freely go in circles. Well, guess where that meta returns? Armored Core 6. And so what's funny is that I've been seeing a lot of reaction videos and discussion around this game, and a lot of people are like breaking their controllers for Armored Core 6. Ironically, Armor Core 6, in my opinion, is much easier than Armor Core 5, like a lot easier. All you need to do is circle straight. Just fly in a circle close to the enemy. Just do that. It works so good. It was funny, Boghog and I were discussing that spider boss fight. I beat that spider boss like my second try. All I had to do, get underneath him circle straight. It just works. It's just really good. And so the problem with the change in the camera system for Armor Core 6 is that to me, it really reduces that skill gap and complexity of the movement system and the meta of the movement because in Armor Core 6, just circle strafe, bro. Go in circles. Now it's not that simple. You do have to have 
timed dodges with your boosts and there's going to be change times where you do change it's not that dead simple but it is much simpler much simpler than armor core 5. so is armor core 6 combat bad no i think it's fun but i think it is much simpler and more straightforward and kind of less interesting than armor core 5's combat system there's a lot more technical things you can do with the boosts and the movement in armor core 5 that you just don't matter in armor core 6 even if you can kind of do them what's it matter <laughs> it really doesn't so that's one of my first big critiques of armor core 6 is i get why they did it because when you first pick up the controller in 6 and 5 6 is going to feel a lot more natural to most players and i think most players don't really have an interest in this whole boosting traction meta of armor core 5 and mech games generally so they would prefer the dark soul style camera system and that, that's valid but if you like that more technical camera system of the past you're out of luck it's gone so that brings me to my second point the jumping and movement system of armor core 6 which again i think is very intuitive i think it is very accessible but I think it is limited, much more limited than I would like to see. And I'm gonna bring up two big critiques. The first one is in the air controls. So in Armor Core 5, it's actually a lot different. This is probably one of the biggest shifts between the series is that in Armor Core 5, you can't fly upward like you can in Armor Core 6. So Armor Core 6, you can point your camera anywhere you wanna point it, and then you can boost in that direction with some delay, that's, a, that's key. Because if they remove that delay, it'd be interesting, but there's delay. You aim and then you boost up there, or you hold a, or hold the boost button and you rise up there. Actually, a lot like Mech Assault. In Armor Core 5, this does not exist. You have a jump button, but if you hold the jump, you just stay at your jump arc. And so what you do in that game, it's less intuitive, but I think more interesting, is you jump you hover, and then you can wall jump off of stuff. And the wall jumps are quite glorious, especially when you start getting really good at them. You can wall jump and boost, and you can link together your wall jumps and boosts. And the interesting difference is that in Armor Core 6, jumping up in the air and getting vertical is much easier in that game, but you actually can't stay in the air as long. So 6 has a lot of jumping, and floating down like Princess Peach. You jump, you float in the air, you shoot stuff, and then you slowly fly down. But in Armor Core 5, what happens is you jump and you boost off of things, but you actually can stay in the air way longer. So what you can do is you can transition from ground to air combat in that game much more seamlessly. You can jump, you can be on a building, you can kick off the building, be in the air, glide down, and the key difference is that in Armor Core 5, you can turn off your boosters in the air and fast fall, like in Super Smash Brothers. You can fast fall by turning off your boosters. In Armor Core 6, I tried. <laughs> There's no fast fall in the game. They did that. They limited that intentionally to make the gameplay a little bit more controllable and less technical. They nerfed jumps, basically, in Armor Core 6 because in Armor Core 6, if you could jump, float, and then fast fall, that would be really cool, I think, but it would get a lot more complicated. So instead, the way jumping and movement works in Armor Core 6 is it's much more reserved. It's more like you do jump and you do shoot at things, but you know you don't want to get too crazy with it. Uh, you got to pick your timing. You got to know when it's safe to jump, when it's safe not to jump. And then if you jump in the air and it's kind of a bad timing, you need to retreat back move away whereas in five i think the jumping system has more potential but it's more complicated and hard to understand so once again they're kind of streamlining that out to make it more accessible and more people at first glance are probably going to appreciate arm core systems jumping system and moving system and camera system also i do know that you can jump in the air and dash downward with the thruster but the thing about dashing downward with the thruster is that it takes forever to start up and go. So maybe if you're like in middle of a level or fighting some lighter enemies and stuff like that, you can do it. 
But if you're fighting a boss and you jump in the air and you're trying to do downwards thrusters as like a strategy, unless there's like a particular setup or something, it's just way riskier and you're like a big flying turkey in the air versus just keeping your ass on the ground and boostering on the ground. So that brings us to the third point, which is the weapon system. If I were to describe the weapon system and overall design concept behind Armored Core 6 in a word, I think that word would be temperance, cautious control. Armored Core 6 does not want you to do too much. It gives you a lot of toys to play with, but the toys have rules, kids. You can't go too crazy with it. And so a big difference between Armored Core 5 and Armored Core 6 is that Armored Core 6 introduces weapon cooldowns. Oh joy, weapon cooldowns. Don't we all love weapon cooldowns god i'm gonna have to make a dedicated video on this concept but there's an idea of game design that i want to put out there that i want to call natural balance versus statistical balance and this concept is epitomized in armor core 6's weapon system and basically the way it works is that armor core 6 has certain weapons that are intrinsically more effective than other weapons and so the way the game decides to balance this is by introducing stats and cooldown. And so you take a weapon that could be considered OP and amazing, like a Gatling gun, for example, or the rifle, because it fits so well with the overall game design, circle strafing. And the game's like, okay, yeah, if we let you just go crazy with this gun, it's gonna be too good. So we're gonna have the gun overheat and have a cooldown. And we're gonna have to control the firing rate and make sure that firing rate isn't too fast. And this is one of my least favorite things about Armored Core 6. And in fact, I dislike it more than the camera system. I can kind of accept that Armored Core 6 has a more simplified camera system because most players aren't gonna wanna deal with Armored Core 5's uh, technical camera system. I can kind of accept that most players are gonna want to circle strafe and circle strafing is kind of fun and a lot of games use that as a tactic anyway. But the part about it that is really hard for me to accept in Armored Core 6 is the weapon cooldowns because it just hard pauses the fun. It does not want you to have too much fun and I don't actually understand why. I don't know where exactly this came from with FromSoft because from my understanding, Armored Core 6 isn't supposed to be like an RPG, right? And so like having weapon cooldowns and that kind of stuff, it, it, those feel like RPG mechanics to me or like Western first person shooter concepts. Weapon cooldowns are like in Mech Assault made by Microsoft Studios. Why is FromSoft having weapon cooldowns in Armored Core 6? It is so weird. It changes the feel of the game a lot because, yes, the weapons in Armored Core 5 have different firing rates and so, you know, things take different times to fire, but there is no weapon cooldown. It's a Japanese style action game. You get double rifles in Armored Core 5 and you just hold the trigger button and you just fire those double rifles to your heart's content. Armored Core 6, every so often, you're just waiting for them to reload. Stop, we need to reload. Why are you reloading in Armored Core? It's not a tactical shooter. It's not Gears of War. You're not taking cover behind things. You're circle strafing enemies. I do not think the, the weapon cooldown was a good move. I do not think it fits with the vibe of the game. Obviously, people can say, and even in the tips menu of Armored Core 6, it says, time your reloads with the staggers. And so I think that's what they wanted is they wanted to bring in the stagger system from Dark Souls and all these other action RPGs. We want staggers because everyone loves staggers. So let's bring in the staggers, but to balance around the staggers, let's have weapon cooldowns. And so what happens a lot and what you're supposed to do, the game even tells you to do this, is you're supposed to damage the enemy, uh, deal with the weapon cooldown until they're just about to be staggered. And then you need to like slowly peter at them with little peep, peep, and then reload so that when they get staggered, then you can unleash upon them while they're staggered. It's an extra tactic, that's for sure. It's an extra 
part of the gameplay, but to me, it's like really lame. I think it's the lamest part of this entire game is these weapon cooldowns and the stagger system. Okay, sure, have staggers in the game, fine, but do we need to have weapon cooldowns along with them to balance the staggers? I just really dislike the weapon cooldown, and it gives the game a really sluggish feeling pace. It makes the game feel slow because there's a lot of instances where you got to take your shot when the opportunity arises, right? That's the idea behind an action game. If someone puts their back to you, you don't just say, oh, well, I'm not going to slash their back because that might cause some weapon cooldown. Let me wait for my sword to recharge. No, they turn and you stab their ass in the back. But in Armored Core, with the weapon cooldown, it's like, well, do I reload before I stab them in the back for these three seconds? No. So what ends up happening is you unload everything, they get in stagger, you're in weapon cooldown, and then there's this hilarious moment that happens over and over in what is supposed to be some kind of action game where you're doing nothing and the opponents do nothing and there's nothing to be done. Everyone's just sitting there staring at each other. You're staring at your enemy, they're staring at you, nothing's happening, nothing's going on. I, like in the world of action game and action game design, like this is an issue, this is a problem. FromSoft needed to figure something out and you could say, well, you're supposed to strategically wait and keep a weapon in reserve and make sure that you have a weapon in reserve when they're in cooldown. But to me, that's really lame. That's an RPG stamina system concept being injected into Armored Core. And what's frustrating is that even Western developers have figured this out. With the whole boomer shooter craze and Doom 2016, Western shooters have now figured out, oh, Weapon cooldowns are lame. Oh, having to reload all the time is lame. It was cool in Doom 2016 where you didn't reload. You just fired. They figured it out. Western games have figured this out. And now Japanese games, which knew this before, are now catching up with the dumb ideas of Western developers from like 2010 or whatever. So the weapon cooldowns, not a fan of that at all. And then there's the melee mechanics. Because of the stagger system and the weapon cooldown system, you can tell that FromSoft really, really wants you to use a melee weapon. They really, really do. You can tell this game, there's not, it's not a coincidence that in the tutorial mission, it forces you to have a melee weapon because the game really, really wants you to use a melee weapon. Ironically, talking about natural balance versus statistical balance, the way they have naturally balanced the melee weapons of this game makes them kind of crappy, makes them kind of shitty because they have this massive startup and they have this baked in tracking startup. So even if you're like standing right on top, you're going to have this massive delay to finally get your attack out because it has this really slow really long startup. It makes Dark Souls melee attacks seem like freaking Devil May Cry nunchucks. I mean, they're just super slow. And the idea is like, okay, this is a mech game. Mechs are slow. They're going to have slow melee attacks. But the problem is, is that they've shifted the entire balance of the rest of the game to be speedy and quick. So having slow ass melee uh, attacks when you have lightning fast movement and aiming makes no sense. They should not have made the melee so freaking slow and unwieldy because it's just not naturally good to use. Like if you're fighting a boss and you want to hit them with a melee attack, you really need to know when to have them set up for that melee attack. And usually that setup's going to be, they're going to be in stagger, right? That's kind of what the game has decided is it's going to have you put big enemies and stagger and then you hit them with the melee. But if you're trying to fight a quick moving enemy and you're trying to hit them with the melee mechanic and you whiff, I mean, just the startup and whiff animation alone, you're going to get lit up. And then by the time you recover, I mean, it just makes the melee attacks way too risky. So that how they balanced it is they've made statistically the melee attacks really good. So like when they hit, they do an ass load of damage, but they just don't 
feel good to use. They don't feel intuitive and fun to use. They feel lumbering and slow and clunky. And so for me, what I've found that feels much better and much more intuitive is use shotguns. Forget using the melee attacks, just use shotguns. So what I do, the build I run, which seems highly effective until more weapons are introduced, but like the general idea I think is really good, is you get double rifle. The double rifle is good because now there's less weapon cooldown because you got two of them and they have a steady rate of fire and they seem less susceptible to weapon cooldown than most other weapons. So you get the double rifle and then when you get them low, you switch to double shotgun and then you use the double shotguns. And shotguns seem like a much more effective close range weapon than the melee because they don't have startup you can move freely, you can circle strafe while shooting him. So double rifle into double shotgun, it just seems really good naturally. I think the way the game deals with this is to just statistically make the shotguns not do as much damage, make the rifles do as not much damage statistically, but naturally that's a really good build for what the game wants you to do, which is to circle strafe, stagger get close and attack you know it just seems like a, a really effective combination and through the stages as well you know you go through the stages with the double rifle and go into the double shotgun it's a very compelling good build and the most fun i've had with all the different builds i tried to use the melee that just felt clunky and slow and lame and also i think it was a mistake to require a slot for your melee attack the melee should be built into the mech this time around if they really want you to use melee as much as they seem to, just build it into the mech and give the mech all of its controls and then have the melee be its own you know, weapon that you can use. For example, the boost on and off button, just get rid of that because you want to be boosted on all the time anyway. So just have it be automatically boost all the time, swap that button with a melee attack button. So then you've got your four shoulders for firing and then you've got like B or whatever circle for your melee attack. It just feels like a much better fit than having to give up one of your gun slots to this clunky, crappy melee weapon that no one likes. So I thought the melee was really underwhelming. And also, if you're gonna have built-in cooldowns, why do you have ammo counts as well? We're in Armor Core 5, yes, you can run out of ammunition as well, but you don't have weapon cooldown. So, Part of the natural incentive to stop you from just shooting all day every day in Armor Core 5 is to give you ammo counts. But in Armor Core 6, it feels overly limiting because you have both weapon cooldown slash reload and ammo counts. So the game just really does not want you to shoot. It really does not like that. The game is like Battle Gorega. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. We want you to be as reserved with your shots as possible. That's a choice. It's balanced. I just don't particularly like it. I would prefer instead of having low enemy counts, low ammo counts, let's go Doom 2016. Let's go the other direction of having high ammo counts and high enemy counts. Let's increase the amount of encounters. Let's increase the intensity. And that brings me to my next point, which is the overall enemy and level design. I think in a lot of ways the, the level design and enemy design in Armor Core 6 is solid. Like I said, I think this is an 8 out of 10 game. It's solid. It's well done. It's not bad. But again, it feels a little bit reserved. Well, in Armor Core 5 Verdict Day, Chapter 2, uh, that stage is 1 8th the size of most stages in Armor Core 6, and yet Despite being a much smaller stage, or maybe because of it, it is so much more intense and engaging because the enemies in that game are ruthless. And not only are they ruthless, but you are trapped in a box and you've got to fight your way out of it. It's just so much more intense. The real estate of the levels feels so much more meaningful, like taking control of this street in Armor Core 5 in that stage feels like, yes, that's an accomplishment. And you actually use the terrain to your advantage a lot more in that game because the levels are more contained and pushed in. 
and the way the enemies and movement of that game work is like you actually use buildings for cover and you use the terrain to affect the combat a lot. Like that's part of the natural meta of the game is you learn the lay of the land and you learn to use the high ground and to use different advantages of the terrain. Whereas in Armored Core 6, a lot of that meta is kind of dumbed down. It's a really reduced. Yeah, you kind of use the terrain a little bit here and there, but for the most part, uh, it, it doesn't really matter all that much. It's a lot of free space. It's a lot of open space. It's a lot of boosting through the air or boosting on flat ground. It, the, the terrain and the level design just doesn't have as much of an impact. And also the enemies are way more spread out in that game. It gets more intense the further you get, which is good. The later you get in the stages, it does start to become a little bit more compact and intense. And it's not bad, but I just think like the shift between the two, I wish Armor Core 6's stages were, if not smaller, at least more dense, like have more stuff in the stages, more enemy encounters, more things to get behind and more terrain. There's just a lot of empty space in the game. And I get it because there's just a lot of more empty space in games generally. But yeah, there's a lot of stages where like it's cool. Like there's that stage where you fight that giant walker. I mean, it's cool the first time. But then after a time or two, you realize this is just a lot of empty space. I mean, it's cool how much empty space there is, but that really is all there is. It's just a bunch of empty space. So yeah, I, j I just wish the levels were a little bit more tight and dense. Uh, not bad, but kind of plodding at times. You know, the pace of the game is a lot slower. Now let's talk about boss fights. So the boss fights in Armor Core 6 are interesting because in a lot of ways, the Armor Core 6 formula actually lends itself more to boss fights. That is the trade-off. Having the free aiming camera and stuff makes boss fights a lot more accessible. And so I would say the main highlight of Armor Core 6 and its system changes, its main accomplishment is the boss fights. I think that is the strongest part of the game. I think that is basically the reason to play the game. And the most fun I have in Armor Core 6 are the boss fights. I think that's the best part of the game. But at the same time, I feel like if the main mechanics of the game were a little bit less constrained, if they removed the weapon cooldown, if they allowed you to fast fall in the air and have a bit more technical options with your movement and ways for players to di differentiate themselves in terms of the fundamental mechanics, I feel like that would really take the game to the next level. That's why it's, for me, not a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 because I think the boss fights are really fun and well made but they just are missing that secret sauce that takes them to the next level because the boss fights kind of become for me like you figure out what the main uh, patterns are and then you just kind of work in your circle strafe or work in your, your formula and that's all you really need to do you know it there could be more is what I'm getting at there could be more to the fights and more to the core combat. I think the boss fights are fun, but for me, they fall short of that top tier from soft magic, the stuff of legends that people talk about and revisit over and over. I can't see the game falling into that classic action game rotation because I think from soft overdid it a little bit. I think they were too limited and too cautious with the gameplay mechanics. I think perhaps the next Armor Core game they make, Armor Core 7 or Armor Core 6 Remix or the next one in the series, maybe because of the success and the acceptance of this new formula, maybe that will embolden them to take more risks on the next release. And that is kind of my final thought and analysis of Armor Core 6. I think it is well made. I think everyone is going to have fun playing it. I do recommend it, but I think it falls short of what FromSoft could be capable of with this series and even with this new take on this series, where if they're a bit more bold, they turned off the governors on the guns, they turned up the intensity, they turned up the pace, they turned up the movement and technical options of the game, allow you to fast fall, maybe have the camera be a bit more constrained, I think that could really take the game to the next level. And those would be things I would hope to see 
in an update into a sequel. And so I recommend Armor Core 6. I think it is a solid release, one of the best releases this year, but it's not quite there for me to be considered an all time great must play release. Though it did reinvigorate my interest in the Armor Core series. And so I can see myself perhaps in the near future playing more Armor Core 5 and maybe covering that a bit more on the channel. Um, and maybe that will be a really cool silver lining to Armor Core 6, which it is a solid game, but it would also be cool if the game kind of reawakened some interest in these poor older FromSoft games that were so neglected and uh, kind of not well treated during their heyday because around the same time that FromSoft was making Armor Core 5, they were making Dark Souls. So it was from an era where from software kicking some ass in terms of game design. So maybe one cool thing about Armor Core 6 is that it could reawaken some interest in Armor Core 5, maybe get us a PC port of Armor Core 5. Because right now you gotta play it on the Xbox 360, which is cool, but it would be cool to see it on newer systems and on Steam and all that kind of stuff. So hope you all enjoyed this review. Adios everyone. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100 100 Accepting Panda, Admiral Coconut, Anhold, Alexander Pfeiffer, Anthony A, Arcade Hell, Arrow Viper, Auto Named, Beam Pit, Bo, Ben, Beetle Dames, Boghog, Borgy22, Brian Shiver, Chase Palumbo, Chattel Maltese, Chris Yusupovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Clericliff, Climby Coyote, Coast, Color Boy, Cook Sand 666, Cook Some Soup, Corey Mark, Des Audio, Danchi, Darren Griffin, Dave Hansen, David Crespo, Delta Tango 6, Dick Jones, Dingo, Disco Stas Leia, DJ420, Praise It, Dr. Boss Key, Elias Alonzo, Evan Serafet, FCK, Fiskin, Frames for Human, Francisco, Full Set, Game Boy Guru, GPM, Hausu, Jake Ryan, JLab, JBRPG, Jink Hans, John Kelly, George Sand, K, K Horse, K2, Contain, Craze the Boys, Low Casting, Mieshba, Malaise, Mars Bar, Matt O'Leary, Maz, Megadeth859, Minung, Michael McCord, Mitchell Y, Moonro, Nathaniel Davis, Neon Dagger Games, Oakley Cools, Pedro Perez, Psycho Blizzard, Queen Charlene, Raul, Real Skeen, Retro Shmupper, Riff Mason, Rolf015, Scanline City, Sebastian, Seesaw FW, Shazzy, Shmup Junkie, Sirapong, Fighters STG, Steady AI, Steve Fiction, Street Magic, Super Funk, SW1335, Tamzarian, Takeramucho, Taze, The Boot Rex, The Dirty Screech, The N1, The Old Bensta, Tony Matundula, Toho Rizardi, TRM, Sugumo, 2YU, Twilight EX, Unicoi Roots, Ursua, Ushi Mushi, Vic Viper, Beautiful, Wabby Legs, Yosef, Zachary Patton, and Zeal.